going on, party people? This your man, Griff. Hey, thanks again to Captivated Notary and my man, Q, for another great intro. I hope y'all like that. Let me know how you liked it in the comment section below. <clears throat> I me and him was talking a couple about a month ago and he said hey you want to do a new intro for me so i was like man go for it so great intro i like it are you ready i hope you are so as the title says it talks about how to notarize with gtp with mm, with chat gtp my bad y'all how to notarize with chat gpt i always call it gtp i don't know why i'm thinking of that car that gt car but how to notarize with chat gpt okay how to notarize with that and the reason why i have my notary tech talk gear on because it's washing <laughs> okay um i think it's washing hang up all wrinkled i didn't iron anything so my bad and all that stuff and i didn't have time to run down and grab my coffee my, G, my notary tech talk coffee cup so that's why i don't have my gear but i didn't want to let that stop us from having our time together talking about chat gpt all right so excuse the little hiccups here i could edit this out but i'm not all right so chat gpt is a tool that is used as an artificial intelligence ai tool used to create content used to answer questions coding a whole bunch of stuff okay it's a lot of things it can do so i would suggest that you just google chat gpt and look at some of the videos um currently right now bill soroka is doing a good series on how to use G chat gpt to create content if you're trying to be a content creator or are a content creator and having some roadblocks so it's a real good tool um with the mbb you can um the joint join mbb.com i'll put the link in the description below i don't get any kickbacks from this okay but he's doing that every thursday and take a look at that so he's dealing with this from the how to create content aspect and today excuse my sinuses um i was out in the cold the other day doing um some house inspections and i was out there a little too long so my sinuses are starting to act up a little bit <clears throat> and everything but I'm going to deal with chat GT, GPT from the standpoint of how <clears throat> to get answers to your notarization questions, how to get answers to your notarization question. Let me say it one more time, how to get answers to your notarization questions. Because when I started looking at it, I said, <clears throat> and seeing what it can do, and I'm a computer guy. So I said, okay, if it can create code for me, then it can answer some questions that notaries really need answered. So I'm like, what well, what's some questions that notaries need to answer? And we're going to go over those today. So first, I want to show y'all how to get to um, chat GTP. I keep saying GT. Y'all know what I'm talking about, GPT. Oh, man, I got to fix that one day. All right. So there's the website down there at the bottom. And let's drop this down here. So this is the website. I'm going into, I'm using, um, what's this here? Edge, Microsoft Edge, because I'm already logged in on Chrome. And when you get here and you go to the link that's down here at the bottom, what you're going to do is click on try GPT. And then it's going to take you to this here page. And then you're going to click sign up if you don't already have an account. <clears throat> if you do not have an account, click sign up. And what you're going to do is you can enter an email address and all of that, or you can click go in with a Google account or a Microsoft account, whichever one you want to do. That is totally, totally up to you. <clears throat> okay. That is totally up to you. You figure out which one you want to use and you use that. Okay. So once you get in, then let me swing on over to what you will see. Once you get in, you will have this here dialog screen where you can answer questions. So let me <clears throat> hit the back button. All right. So when you go in, it'll do all of this little fancy stuff and it'll bring you to this here question. It'll ask you, you know, it'll just give you examples, capabilities, limitations and all that good stuff. So I've already asked it some questions. OK, and just so you can get an idea, let's see here. Um, 
I'm going to just ask you a basic question. Um, how many, let's see what it says, interstate road ways are there in Virginia? I'm going to just ask it then. All right. So here it is. It says there are approximately 1,500 miles of interstate roadway in Virginia, which I find that quite small. This includes portions of several different highways, including I-64, I-66, <clears throat> excuse me, I-81, I-95, and I-85. Now, what it doesn't cover here, which is odd, it doesn't talk about I-664, which is one of the interstates in here, which is a uh, X or 264. So it talks about 64, but it doesn't include 264. So the accuracy of it can be a little skewed. And I point that out because I'm going to show y'all a little bit later. So one of the questions that I asked it, <clears throat> which is something that comes up all the time, I asked it this question, how to notarize a document in Virginia? And okay, so that's the question up here how to notarize a document in Virginia. And then it goes on and says, to notarize a document in Virginia, it gives you all of these steps that you can go to a bank, you can um, you have to present your ID, sign the document. Then it says, have a notary witness your signature, the notary will watch you sign the document. And then we will ask you to swear or affirm to the information that's true. And that's primarily only if it's a jurat, okay? Or an affidavit, and then you use a jurat. So at that point right here, you can clearly see that it's not differentiating from acknowledgement or jurat. Okay. It's just saying that you swear to the information is true. <clears throat> if you don't understand your state law and basic notorial law, you're, you're, you're asking them to make an, a, a, a sworn, doing a um, swearing them in during an acknowledgement when you don't have to do that. The notary, have the notary notarize the document. The notary will stamp or seal the document and certify that they witness your signature. To, basically, by them doing that, to certify that they witness the signature. So this is very, very. This gives you a general idea. And I just asking now. I'm asking it from a notary standpoint, but it's answering it as a person who is not a notary. Okay. So it also says it is important to note that notarization is not the same as certification or authentication. Notarization simply verifies that the signature on the document is genuine and that it was signed in the presence of a of the notary. Certification or authorization may be required for certain types of documents that need to be used in other countries. Apostille. You should check with your appropriate agency or embassy to determine what additional steps may be required for these types of documents. Then I asked the all famous, the most, and I'm, let me zoom this in because I think y'all probably seeing it a little small there. My bad. Then I asked the big question, what goes after the word by on an acknowledgement? And this is why I'm saying you can use this to help you out. So if you're a notary, you stuck on something, you can use this to get a general idea of what it should be now it's not talking state specific right now just talking you know um answering the question that i asked it <clears throat> in an acknowledgement the word by is usually followed by the name of the person who is acknowledging the document for example acknowledged by john smith an acknowledgement is a statement made by a person that they have signed a document willingly and that they understand the contents and consequences of the document it is often used in legal documents to verify the authenticity of a signature and to ensure that the person signing the document fully understands the implications of their signatures. Hold on, let me, so that way I'm not blocking anything. So that is <clears throat> very, very important. It's telling you exactly what the role of a notary is. And this is where a lot of notaries are struggling right now because they don't necessarily understand what the role of a notary is. Now, take a moment and read through this here part right there. So 
is telling us the word acknowledge or acknowledge. You said an acknowledgement typically includes the following information. Here's an example acknowledged by so and so on the, this date at such and such place. The acknowledgement it also includes the signature of the notary who witnessed the, sign the signing of the document. The notary will typically include the name, title, and the date of the notarization and location of the notarization. It's t asking, it's telling you all of that. Now, <clears throat> another question that comes up, changing the venue. How do you go about changing the venue? Now, this answer is primarily, is primarily talking about using a, a word process or some type of documentation tool, word, um, what is that, um, Adobe or whatever, to change it physically. But the whole concept is pretty much the same if you don't have that, which you shouldn't be doing it through that method. For the most part, you can just line through an initial. But basically what it's doing is telling you that you will open the acknowledgement in the document word processor, the section that has that refers to the venue, and you will basically change it, delete the old venue out and replace it with the new venue information. So in other words, for us as notaries, we would just line through an initial and then put the correct state and county that we're in or city. Then I um asked it, what are some, I say example of a notary acknowledgement. So it gave me what an example of a notary acknowledgement is. Okay, it gave me an example. So here you can see it's answering the question. Is answering it for you. It's telling you here's an example of what it can look like and appeared. So per you know, so it tells you the state of county of the date before me, the undersigned or public personally appeared, the name of the person known to me or satisfactorily proven to be the person whose name is described in this instrument. All of that. This and said this is just an example. Specific wording and format of the notary acknowledgement may vary depending on laws and requirements in the state in which it's being used. Note, not the state where it's going, but the state in which it's being used. It's being done right here. So, I mean, yes, it's being used somewhere else, but you have to follow your own state laws. I hope I said that correctly. You make sure you follow your state laws first because they're required to accept our notarial acknowledgements. It is important to consult a qualified attorney, this, that, and the other. <clears throat> then I asked the question, do notaries answer legal questions? It says, notaries are commissioned <clears throat> by the state in which they are licensed to perform certain legal duties, which, I mean, such as witnessing the signature of a document, verifying the identity of a person signing the document. However, notaries are not attorneys and are not qualified to give legal or answer to give legal advice or answer legal questions. So again, you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful. Let me come back to y'all for a second. You have to be very careful when you listen to people telling you, oh, you can answer questions or you can get close to the line, but don't cross it. This here is giving you some good solid information that you should be able to define, that you should be able to find in your notary handbook <clears throat> and you'll get the same answer pretty much from the nna okay <clears throat> sorry about that then it asks then i asked the question here do notaries explain documents notaries are not required to explain the contents or purpose of a document to a person signing it however a notary may be able to provide some general information about the document if asked as long as the notary is not providing legal advice or interpreting the document in any way it is the responsibility of the person signing the document to understand its contents and the legal implications of signing it if you have questions about the contents or purpose of a document you can ask that you are asked to sign, it is important to consult a qualified attorney or legal professional for guidance. You can provide, they can provide you with the legal advice and help you understand the document and any potential legal consequences of signing it. That is key. That is what you, that's what the person should be doing is consulting an attorney. We're not attorneys, so we should not be answering those questions okay 
we should not be answering those questions whatsoever. Um, all right, then the next one here is do notaries collect closing funds? Now, this is more state specific, so this answer may not be correct for your state. Notaries are typically notaries are not typically involved in the collecting of closing funds for real estate transactions or other le <clears throat> legal matters. In most cases, closing funds are collected by the closing agent, which may be an attorney, title company, or real estate agent. The closing agent is responsible for coordinating the transfer of funds and ensuring that all necessary documents are signed and properly recorded. If you are involved in a real estate transaction or other, <clears throat> excuse me, legal matter that requires the collecting of funds, it is important you understand the role of the closing agent and all other parties involved in that pro in the process. You should be careful. You should carefully review documents related to the transaction or matter to ensure you understand your rights and obligations. So it's letting you know that. You may be in a state basically that you cannot collect closing funds. So if you, in Virginia, we're not allowed to do that. So I asked the question twice. Um, then it <clears throat> came back and I asked, said, can Virginia notaries collect closing funds? Now, let me stop for a second. Here's one of the things you need to understand very, very clear. And as Bill Soroka said, and, I, um, and prior to me recording this video, I was sitting in on the training that he did for chat GPT. And as he said, and I agree with him, garbage in, garbage out. So you have to be detailed. You have to give it some good questions. And it can that way the AI can go search it out. Now, as you saw, I asked the first question was, can notaries collect? Then I came back and asked, can Virginia notaries? So you can also ask, can California notaries, can Texas notaries, all of that. Now, depending on how this AI works, it may give you the same answer for every single one. That's why you still need to know your state law. You can you cannot fully lean and depend on chat GPT to give you all the answers to every notorial question for your state. OK, <laughs> excuse me. So it goes on to say this here in Virginia, notaries aren't typically involved in the closing in the um, collecting of closing funds. And this is pretty much the same verbiage up here as it was in the one before. But then it goes on and says in Virginia, notaries in Virginia are commissioned by the state to perform, by the state to perform legal duties such as witnessing the signing of documents and verifying the identity of the person signing the document. They are not qualified to collect closing funds or handle financial transactions. And that is 100% true. That is 100% true that we are not qualified. So unless you take a title producer's license exam and get a title producer license, you cannot collect closing funds. This is this is a game changer to me that you don't have to sit there and play around in these little crazy Facebook groups and get on Clubhouse for hours on end, hoping that somebody asks the question that you want to ask, but you're afraid to ask because you don't want to be embarrassed or give the answer that you're looking for. But the answer they're giving to the question is, is specifically for Kansas and not for your city. I mean, your um, state of Arizona. That's the, that's what I like about this here. OK, is giving you an opportunity to ask questions autonomous, autonomously. And you ain't got to worry about somebody giving you a hard time. That is the beauty of this year. That is the beauty of this year. And I like that. OK, this is going to help notaries out. OK, this is really going to help notaries out. So it lets us know that. Then I asked the question here and I want you all to leave this up here on the screen for a second and let y'all just read through this. And then I'm going to go back and hit some highlights. But I just want you all to read through that yourself ask the question is asked what is a loan signing agent okay give y'all a moment excuse the silence
All right, I'm back. I know that wasn't enough time for y'all to read. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> so it tells us here. Now, just point out some key, some key facts here, okay? A loan signing agent, also known as a mortgage signing agent, or a loan signing or a loan document specialist is a professional who assists the signing of mortgage and loan documents. Now, <clears throat> that can be subjective because most people are like, well, I am assisting in this because I'm actually going to there, but it goes into it. it it's not the assist that you think, okay? I know the y'all my man, this sounds like you're doing more of a teaching rather than notary tech talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, sort of hitting two birds with one stone. All right. So it goes on to say <clears throat> the loan signing aid says the typical is da, 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 da. this typically involves verifying the identity of the bar, explaining the terms and conditions of the loan documents and witnessing the signing of the documents. Now, here's the thing. The <laughs> explaining the terms and conditions. That's the key. As a loan signing agent, and I did a video out there called LSA versus NSA, and I will link it, you know, up there in the thing, it'll pop up about now. But there's a video that I did, and that goes into this, and Superior Notary Services had an ex has an excellent breakdown of the difference between the two, okay? As a loan signing agent, there's more responsibility that you have to divulge information about the document and to help the signers understand and to help the signers understand the document. There's more responsibility on a loan signing agent. Now, the question is, just because you call yourself that, have you really been trained in that? Have you truly been trained to be a loan signing agent per the true original term? Maybe, maybe not. And yes, I know, again, you're probably saying, well, Griff, this don't seem like a notary tech talk. By using this chat GPT, this technology is helping you to get a better understanding of who you're supposed to act who you're supposed to be as a notary or loan signing agent, whichever one you want to call yourself. You just got to make sure you're falling in line with it. OK, so let's go back to it. Then it goes on and says loan signing agents are typically commissioned by a lender or title company to assist with the closing process for mortgage for mortgage and other loan transactions. They may be hired to handle the signing of documents in person or remotely using video conferencing or other electronic means. That right there tells you that the lender or the title company has asked you to assist them in that. That's why I've always said, when you're working with signing companies, you are the, the you are the, the client of the signing company or the signing company, I'm sorry, is the client, is your client. And you're working with them to get this done. If the lender or the title company hasn't told you that this is what they want you to do, <clears throat> or giving you proper training or you've been properly trained as to how to explain the terms and conditions for that lender, you really shouldn't be saying a whole lot about the documents because you don't know what you're saying and you might get yourself in trouble. That's clear. I mean, that is a thousand percent clear in my to, to me. Then it goes on to says loan signing agents are not attorneys and are not qualified to provide legal advice or representation. However, they are trained to explain the terms and conditions of the loan documents in a clear and understandable manner to ensure that the signing process is carried out correctly and in accordance with applicable laws and regulations. So the question now becomes, have you been properly trained to do that? If you have, cool. If you have not, stay away from it. Stop calling yourself something that you're not, okay? But you're going to call yourself whatever you want. But I'm just saying, if you understand it, look at the video again. I, at the 20-minute or some mark, 21-minute mark, I'll put it up there, and I'll link it in the description, and I'll have it at the end of this year, LSA versus NSA, so you can understand the difference between the two. You need to understand the difference so you're not getting yourself out there 
in some kind of trouble. <clears throat> now, this next one, interesting. This is interesting. This is interesting. So I asked the question, what is a notary signing agent? What is a notary signing agent? Now, take a look at that. Read through this re <clears throat> real quick. All right, so it says as a loan signing agent, I'm sorry, my bad, y'all. I just realized I'm down here. There we go. When I zoomed in, it jumped. A notary signing agent is a professional who is both a notary public and a signing agent. A notary public is commissioned, is a commission officer who is authorized to administer oaths, certified documents, and witness the signing of documents. A signing agent is a professional who can assist in the mortgage signing, in the signing of mortgage documents and loan documents, typically verifying the borrower's identity. Now, this is where it gets quirky because, see, they're saying this, but if you even go to the NNA, they tell us as notary signing agents, we are not to explain the terms and conditions of the loan. That's where it gets quirky. And this is where one of the fallacies with the chat gpt is that it's sort of it's not understanding fully the difference and some who are along the line it thinks that oh we can do the same because it's dealing with mortgage documents that is not the case that is truly not the case we should know by now that a notary signing agent per the nna we don't go around explaining documents in terms and conditions because in order to do that that means you have to have some knowledge of the terms and conditions and have an understanding of it to where you can answer the questions if somebody is it has issues with a term or condition if you don't have that knowledge then you shouldn't be answering it so that's one of the fallacies of the chat gpt and i want to show y'all that because see, right now people are talking about using it to create content but somebody's going to get the bright idea and it's a great idea to say hey how do i notarize this how do i notarize that what does this document mean what goes in these blank spaces all of that kind of stuff nothing wrong with that but you need to be aware the tech talk part of it is that you might be given some general answer that's not a hundred percent accurate in accordance with your state law okay that's what you have to be careful of so it goes on to say here a notary signing agent as a notary signing agent an individual is qualified to perform the duties of both a notary public and a signing agent this may include verifying the identity of the borrower explaining terms and conditions again which that may not necessarily be the case depending on where you're at your state and witnessing the signing. Notary signing agents may be hired by the lenders or title companies to assist in the closing process of the mortgage. They may be called upon to do it in person or remotely, same as the other thing. It is important to note that notary signing agents are not attorneys and are not qualified to provide legal advice. That's the key, the key things. So it doesn't, and it says the same thing here. Loan signing agents are not attorneys and not qualified to provide legal advice or representation, okay? So that's what you have to be mindful of. I like this program. I really do like this program because it gives some decent answers to questions about how to do notary stuff, but you still need to bounce that off of what the NNA says, and more importantly, what your state says. Probably should have said the state first, but what the state says as well as what the NNA says, okay? <clears throat> if you got questions how to do something, you can do that. You can type it in. Um, or if you have it on your website, on your phone, you can go to the website on your phone. It's best to go to the website, not the app. I thought it had an app, but the app that I had downloaded is not an official um chat gpt app so go to the website and get you to create an account go in there and ask away 
And I'm telling you, it's going to help you to understand better some of the stuff. So go there. I'll put the link in the description. Y'all see the link right here. And ask the questions. Ask you, ask you some questions. Hey, what's this? What's that? You know, um, all of those quirky little things that you just couldn't get an answer for. Um, so let me, here's one of my big questions I like to ask. I always want to ask, let's see here. What is the difference between a mentor and a business consultant? All right, this thing be rolling. This thing may be rolling. <laughs> so, oops, clicked the wrong thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So mentors, okay, so it says a mentor is typically an experienced individual who provides guidance and support to a mentee, often a personal professional level. On a prof personal professional level, mentors are often taught thought of as wise advisors, who offer guidance and support based on their own experience and insights. Mentors may work with a mentee on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a group setting, and they may provide guidance on a variety of topics, such as career development, business strategy, and personal growth. Business consultants are professionals who provide expert advice and support to organizations to help them improve their operations and achieve their goals. Business consultants are often hired to help organizations solve specific problems or address particular challenges, and they may work together on a variety of projects, at, such as developing new business strategies, improving process, and implementing new technologies. Business consultants may work with organizations on a short-term or long-term basis, depending on the need of the organization and the scope of the project. And overall, the main difference between mentors and business consultants is a, is the type of guidance and support they provide. <coughs> Excuse me. Mentors typically offer personal and professional guidance to individuals, while business consultants provide expert advice and support to organizations to help them achieve specific goals. So you notice in the mentor part, it's not talking about the mentor getting paid. And I know a lot of people don't like it when I go here, but let's be, let's be real. A mentor is a wise advisor, somebody who got experience. And some of these people out here who are trying to be mentors don't really have true experience. Having three or six months more experience than you is not necessarily a good thing, especially if they ain't really been doing that many closings. They just been sitting around whining about how many closings they're not going to do. That's not a mentor, you know. So if you're paying them, they're pretty much a business consultant, which means they have they should have expert advice and they and some of these folks typically don't have expert anything okay they don't so i know i'm about to go off into a tangent <sighs> slow it down real y'all know where i stand on this but i just wanted to bring up the fact that some of these things that people tell you you can do um you should um you should question and that's the beauty about this this is about you questioning what somebody told you, what you think, trying to get an answer. Because a lot of y'all always tell me, I just want an answer. I don't want to hear all that commentary, Griff. There's your answer, but it's going to come with commentary. And you're not hearing it from me. <laughs> so you'll probably hear the same answer here that I would give you in most cases. And ChatGPT just came out less than a month ago, I think um, November 29th or 30th or somewhere around up in there. So this has just come out. So some of the stuff that you might hear or you may read that this is telling you, I probably told you because I understand certain things in life, having some experience, just as if you listen to Bill or Laura or many others out here who got experience either in the business 
five or 10 years or just in life in general, 45, 50, 60 years old, you will hear the same stuff from us. So I hope y'all like this. Give me some feedback in the comments below. Um, I just wanted to hop on real quick and do this before my sinuses really, really start tripping because I'm getting ready to go down here and take me some garlic, lemon, and um, some honey and um, really knock this thing out. When I take that, I feel way better. And I took some this morning and I meant to take, to take some before I started with y'all, but I forgot. So, uh, cause I actually was feeling pretty good. And then of course, as always, as soon as I sit down and start doing the videos, that's when things kick in <laughs> coughing and all of that stuff. So chat GPT, excellent program at this current stage is free. Um, and if you're interested in finding more information out, you know, Bill Soroka is doing some great videos about it. I think if you look up Notary Coach on YouTube, he talks a little bit about it there. Um, it's great. I, I like it. I'm a tech guy anyway. Um, there are some flaws to it. There are some limitations to it. But you can work your way around if you keep your mind open and not look for this to be your end all be all. If you look at it for what it is, is a tool that can help you in a particular area of your life to provide you an answer, to give you somewhat of an answer, to give you some kind of guidance toward an answer, then you'll be okay. Other than that, this is a really, really nice tool and I think you're gonna like it. Got any questions, comments, put them in down below, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and feel free to share this out. Y'all have a good one, peace.